All right, hello everyone. My name is Andy Garza, uh, and this is my PowerPoint project, PowerPoint project presentation slash video recording on Methionine. My school is South Texas College, and this is for the fall 2023 mini master class of chemistry 2423, otherwise known as organic chemistry one. So information covered, we're gonna first start off at the introduction, going through all of these different bullet points and ending at our references. So now what is methionine? Methionine is essentially one of our nine essential amino acids and it's vital for this protein synthesis and the production of important molecules. More so it's an essential amino acid because the body can not produce it on its own, meaning that we have to acquire it through external sources, external food sources. The importance of methionine. Methionine has recently become even more important due to its unique properties of being an essential amino acid and its involvement in the synthesis of creatine and association with health conditions such as liver disease. IUPAC names for methionine, we have 2-amino-4-methylthiobutonic acid, and secondly, we have 2 azenyl 4 methyl sulfanyl butonic acid. Formula details, as you can see on the right-hand side, I provided a picture of methionine uh, with only three of the functional groups present. Uh, however, we do have a thio ether and a methyl group present as well. On the top, we have the molecular formula, followed by the structural formula, and then our functional groups present, methyl group, thio ether group, amino group, and carboxyl group. For our hybridizations, uh, most of the hybridization, most of the, prior most of the priorities are going to be primary carbons and only one secondary carbon for the CH2, CH2 bond of, um, of that peak that we have right next to the secondary amine, that is also going to be sp3 hybridized. Now, for hybridization, most of them are sp3 hybridized. However, we do have one sp2 hybridized, which is going to be the primary carbon of the carboxyl group. For chemical properties, methionine is a sulfur-containing amino acid with a nonpolar hydrophobic nature, and the dietary sources on how to acquire this uh, amino acid can be found in meat, eggs, fish, sesame seeds, Brazil nuts, and cereal grains. The physical properties of methionine, we have a melting point at 281 degrees Celsius, boiling point at 186 degrees Celsius, solubility Methionine is soluble in water at 25 degrees Celsius, coming in at 56.6 milligrams per milliliter, having a pH of 5.6 to 6.0, which is a little acidic, just below 7, pKa at 9.28 at 25 degrees Celsius, and our molecular weight coming in at 149.21 grams per mole. Acidity of pKa. Acidity and pKa. So, I provided only these uh, acidities and pKa's for sulfide, secondary amine, and carboxylic acids. For sulfide, our pKa is 8.5 with a pH of 9, secondary amine pKa of 10 with a pH of 7, which is neutral, and our carboxylic, of course, is an acid, so a pKa of 5 and a pH of 2.5. For our IR spectrum, we can see that there is two highlighted uh, circles here which represent uh, some key factors on how to identify the molecule. So on the 2200 to 3600 wavelength range, we have a broad peak appearing, indicating that there is a carboxylic acid present, whereas on the 1650 to 1820 wavelength range, there is another significant peak that we can identify as a carbonyl group. For our chirality, there is only, there is only one chiral Chiral carbon center, and uh, on in order to identify the configuration, we had to list it by priority. The secondary amine being first, followed by the carboxylic acid and the CH CH two bond carbon being third, with the fourth being hydrogen, of course. And that leads us to having a clockwise rotation, leading us to determine, leading us to um, identify it being an S configuration. For the resonance. There, it was only two resin, different resonance structures that I found, and I drew them out for you guys. And because of this, I also provided a hybrid resonance structure. So the resonance is occurring on the carboxyl, carboxylic acid group. Uh, the electrons are flowing from the oxygen to oxygen and uh, changing the, the charges of them. And then on the hybrid resonance, you can see the small dot showing the transfer of electrons. 
for the isoelectric points. Isoelectric point is, is, is uh, essentially the pH level at which a molecule has no net electrical charge. And it is also the pH level at which an electrically neutral molecule exists. So for methionine specifically, it has an isoelectric point of approximately a pH of 5.7, which is pretty, which is uh, acidic. And the amino acid in the isoelectric point in the isoelectric form at this pH, which means that it has no electrical charge. Down below, there is a picture, there is a picture slash formula provided on how to calculate the isoelectric point of an amino acid. Now, for uh, electronic properties of methionine, we have our bond length, order, polarity, and reactivity. For our bond lengths, we have uh, just single bonds and double bonds. The single bonds being CC carbon carbon bonds, CS carbon sulfur bonds, and CO double bonds, which are our um, carbon oxygen or carboxyl group bonds. So, in order to determine the bond lengths of our single bonds, are going to be significantly longer than the second bonds. This is primarily because of the fact that the double bonds are stronger since there are more bonds in between them, meaning that they attract each other more, making them harder to separate. So double bonds are shorter than single bonds. The order, our carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds as mentioned previously. So are the CS carbon sulfur bonds and the carbon oxygen bonds are our shorter ones. For our polarity, our carbon-carbon and carbon sulfur bonds are generally nonpolar, whereas the CO carboxyl group bonds are, um, sorry, they're polar. Yes, carbon-oxygen bonds are polar, and CC and CS bonds are nonpolar. For our reactivity, methionine's reactivity is influenced by the functional group, groups present such as amino, carboxyl, and sulfur-containing side chains. Side chain. The sulfur atom in the side chain is reactive and can undergo various chemical reactions as well. For our stereochemistry of methionine, we have stereogenic atoms. Uh, methionine contains a stereogenic center at which it is the carbon atom bonded to four different substituents, the chiral center of the alpha carbon of the amino backbone. Additionally, the alpha carbon, the one bonded to the sulfur atom, is a stereogenic center because it is attached to four different groups, a hydrogen, a methyl, an amino, and a carboxyl. Enantiomers. Enantiomers are essentially a mirror image of isomers are essentially mirror image isomers of a molecule. For methionine, the enantiomer would be a single molecule, would be the molecule with the opposite configuration of stereogenic center. It is, it is, in this case, it would involve changing the arrangement of the substituents around the alpha carbon. Diastereomers, uh, there's diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not mirror images of each other. And since methionine has only one stereogenic center, it does not have diastereomers in it based on the multiple chiral centers. Special features. Special feature of enantiomers is that they are non-superimposable images and they have opposite optical activities. Methionine itself is optically active due to its chiral center. For protein synthesis. Now, I want y'all to bear with me because some of these words may be complex and it is also kind of lengthy. But uh, nonetheless, let me get into it. The biosynthesis of methionine involves the conversion of aspartic acid into homocerine, which serves as a branching point with lysine biosynthetic pathway. Homocerine is then activated with a phosphate succinyl group, succinyl or acetyl group. The hydroxyl activating group is replaced with cytosine met methane thiol or hydrogen sulfide, resulting in the formation of cytothionine, homocytosine or methionine respectively. Cytothionine is cleaved yield is cleaved to yield homozyanine, which upon thiol group methylation forms methionine. The pathway using cytosine is turned from is termed the transfluoration pathway, while the route involving hydrogen sulfide or methane thiol is called the direct sulfuration pathway. Cytosine biosynthesis involves the conversion of homocytosine via ether via either the reverse transfluoration route using activated serine or the direct sulfuration route using hydrogen sulfide. This intricate process is mediated by various enzymes, often utilizing pyridoxal phosphate as a cofactor. On the bottom, you can see the picture that I provided for the synthesis protein, for the protein synthesis of methionine, starting off at aspartine, going all the way to the right, then down, then to the left, finishing off at methionine. 
for the uses of methionine, uh, this can be used greatly in the health of the liver. More so, it is involved in the synthesis of phosphate of phosphatidyl phosphate dicholine, a component of cell membranes and contributes to the prevention of fatty liver disease. So in order, the way on how this works, it essentially starts off with the synthesis of metal thionines, then going on to the binding of heavy metals, then going to detoxification, and lastly is excretion either through urine or sweat or other sources. So uh, this essentially helps you with preventing from getting heavy metal poisoning uh, because of the detoxification and the attachment of metal thionines binding to heavy metals. So the structure, function relationship of methionine, sulfur atom. Methionine contains a sulfur atom in its side chain and sulfur, and sulfur is a highly reactive element. The lone pair of electrons in the sulfur make it nucleophilic and capable of forming covalent bonds with electrophilic centers, especially metals. Thioether group. The in methionine is composed of a sulfur carbon of a sulfur atom bonded to the carbon atoms, including a methyl group. This including a methyl group. This thioether functionality provides the nucleophilic sulfur atom for interactions with various substances. Methionine through its sulfur containing side chain participates in the synthesis of metal metal thionines. More so, these metal thionines are present in are, pre are proteins rich in cytosine residues that have high affinity for heavy metals. The sulfur atoms of, thionine, of thiol groups cytosine and methionine can form coordination bonds with heavy metal ions, effectively sequentering and neutralizing them. This process prevents the metals from excreting toxic effects on these cells and tissues. So, um, for the future of methionine, we can see here that there has been recent studies which suggest that limiting the intake of methionine which is an essential acid found in food. And that is how we acquire it because our body cannot produce it on its own, can have positive effects on the health, especially in rats. This restriction of dietary methionine has been linked to increased lifespan and improved metabolic health. Scientists are also focused on understanding how our body senses and responds to this dietary change. So on the right hand side, you can see how I provided a picture for you guys on some of the anatomy that is getting on uh, some of the organs and parts of the body that are getting affected or that have to correlate with the use of methionine and on the bottom you can see at it at a more um, molecular level with dna and other enzymes and molecules and how they interact with each other and on the bottom is my sources and lastly these are the references provided for the project presentation slash PowerPoint video recording. Now, I want to thank you all for listening to my PowerPoint presentation project. And I also wanted to uh, apologize if I went through kind of fast, especially because of the fact that I was only limited to, to uh, uh, 15 minutes. So I'm sorry for that. But I, but nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed the listening to the video. And thank you all. Have a wonderful day.